Shout out to Track Club to the little Christmas present. So thoughtful. Thank you, Track Club. Okay, something every editor deals with at some point is moving an object from point A to point B. And if you've ever done that, you know how tedious it can be to make it look good and appealing to the eye. This is something that my buddy Jake and I literally talk about all the time. It's so tedious. I just need a tool that gets me out of fusion and has me stop dragging in Bezier curves, dude. <laughs> yeah, like I don't want to be going into fusion. I want to do a couple clicks and we're ready to go. Like moving, moving through the edit, moving on. And I want it to look nice. And that should be so many less clicks than it is today. <laughs> so currently I'm on a mission to make the fastest tool to animate within DaVinci Resolve on the edit page. The ultimate test here will be getting Jake's opinion and see if he's keen to add in the plug into his workflow. He's always been brutally honest with me when it comes to sharing my work with him. So I know if he's willing to add it to his workflow, I know that it'll be fast enough and simple enough to share with the rest of the world. If we can get it in your effect panel, in DaVinci Resolve and get you to actually use this thing and get it Jake approved, then I think we're onto something. I think that's a good thing. I, I, I agree. I am one, I will be the first to admit, who buys a lot of plugins and does <laughs> not use them because I hate them. So if, if we can get it into my workflow, we've done something good. <laughs> okay, so that's gonna be our goal is to get Motion Tween into Jake's workflow. <laughs> hey, positive thoughts. I think we're gonna do it. <laughs> okay, I'll check back with you. Uh, when I have something to share with them. So first off, what actually is motion tweening? Tweening is short for in-betweening, and it's kind of the process of actually generating all the frames in between point A to point B. So this is the in-betweens. So back in the day when they were doing hand animation, a main artist would draw the main poses. So the main artist would draw A and B, and then they would have another artist called an in-betweener who would draw all the frames in between those main poses. So now we know this whole process as just adding keyframes and the program basically just fills in everything in between those keyframes. So the program has become our in-betweener and we are the main artists. So this concept is the basis for the tool that I'm gonna build. And you might be sitting there already being like, if DaVinci already does it, why build an entirely new tool? And that's because it takes too long. There's too many clicks. There's not enough easing options uh, readily available at the speed that I wanna edit at. So I want to condense basically the position, scale, rotation, all those things into one keyframe of point A and do the same for point B and take all those keyframes and turn it into a single keyframe. So when I click one, it animates all of those things. The most important part here is actually the easing. Right now in the edit page, it's always linear and I don't want it to be that way. I want the easing to be customizable, but also just have a really nice default easing so you can just keep editing. I really want it to be less clicks and save more time because that is kind of the basis of why I'm building this tool. If it doesn't save time and it doesn't look better, then we have failed our job. But I really think that that's not gonna happen. I think it'll look better and I think it'll be faster. And uh, yeah, those are like the two biggest metrics that we have to look at going forward. So yeah, let's do this thing. Okay, so once I popped open Fusion, it's kind of relatively the same thing here. I'm starting with two shapes just like I was on paper and I'm basically telling Fusion to subtract point uh, B or the second position from the first position and just having a slider that goes between the two. Then we can actually use the slider to get the in-betweens of the positions no matter where we move the start position or the end position. And of course, as I said earlier, anim curves is the game changer thing to this. So we have a really fast way of choosing easy. I'm really stoked that I've made it this far and I've actually been using it this way for the last few months but I don't want a keyframe anymore. Like that is the slowest part I found. Even though it's only two, I just want it to be like automatic. Okay, so this is sort of the breakthrough moment here. I've made the default option to have the auto animation on. And of course it can be toggled off with this little checkbox here and you can use the original slider to keyframe. But what I found to be even faster now is to have this auto animation just on by default and choosing the anim length. So the time duration that it takes to actually go from the start position to the end position and then adding an offset to the time. This would be how long to wait before the animation actually begins. 
So I think this actually gives the effect way more speed. But the other thing that I was discussing with Jake is we only get two positions out of this. And the way I'm going to solve this is by adding a flip keyframes. So in theory, if you just cut the clip, you can basically have endless amounts of end positions. So you could have something that goes from point A to point B and then cut the clip, hit flip. And now you could go from point B to point A. And in theory, continue doing this until you're done your animation. You can do this directly on a clip or on an adjustment clip. And the last things I wanted to add into this effect without making it super bulky is of course motion blur. It needs it and it sells the whole effect. But I also wanted to add a little subtle shape because I just think a lot of people, including myself, are going to be adding this on top of the effect. So might as well just build it in, package it all together. And I think that's it. That's the extra little spice that I think this effect needed. And right now I think it's in its fastest and cleanest form. I've definitely been making a ton of iterations over the last couple months, but I'm ready to send it to Jake. So I'm going to send it to him and then see what he thinks. Okay, dude, what do you think? <laughs> dude, it's incredible. Holy cow, where do you even start? Like, it, it's good. Like, the people need to know that this is good. <laughs> it is. We got the sign it's, off. We got the, you got the sign off. It is that perfect tip of the pyramid that balances simplicity, like elegant UI with just like so few clicks but also like captures all of the power that I generally have to go into fusion for. Let's go, no fusion. And, like, <laughs> I didn't clock it, which is something I, you know, dorky dad probably would have done, but like the number of clicks to move my little stupid PNGs in and fly them around a couple times has to be astronomically fewer than doing it in fusion, which was the whole point. I think we should count them. So in my opinion, this is the least amount of clicks that you could do on the edit page to have an eased animation. 17 clicks, and it's still not that great. Now let's look at Motion Tween. It's an easy seven clicks with Motion Tween. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison, so you can decide which one looks better. If you add two more clicks to Motion Tween, you can get Motion Blur and Shake, and it's still faster. Okay, so that is Motion Tween. That's what I've been working on for the last couple of months and it's really sped up my workflow. And I hope that you can see the difference uh, in results from just using the edit page to using this tool. If you wanna check it out, hit the link in the description. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching.